Grace, peace, and mercy to all of you this day. Welcome to worship. Uh, I remind you to, to like and to share this worship and share that experience in your own Facebook feeds if you have one. Um, that way we can help to spread this good news of God's grace and mercy in Jesus Christ throughout all of our connections. But I thank you for joining us in this worship experience of this day. We're going to begin worship with a, a time of reflection as we have these past weeks. Uh, Connie is going to play a, an accompaniment with a violin today for us to, to take that time uh, to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning.
I invite you to join in our confession and forgiveness this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. God of the way, you have, you have shown, shown us the way and, and the truth and the life through Jesus Christ. Christ. Yet, Yet so often we insist on our way. way. We, we confess, confess that, that at times our love has not always been genuine, nor have we always loved others with mutual affection. Guide us back to the way you have shown to us in Jesus Christ. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to join in our Kyrie and hymn of praise. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Amen. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. All of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. All of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
Oh God, we thank you for your son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the 15th chapter of Jeremiah, verses 15 through 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I do not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor do I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you will stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze, they will fight against you, but they will not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today we are doing Psalm 26. We will sing the refrain together and I will say the verses. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. Redeem me. And show me your mercy. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all of your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Redeem me and show me your mercy. Our second reading this morning is from the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, Verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. 
Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing the, this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I invite you to join in our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, to whom shall we go? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a, a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. And truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before the Son of Man comes they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy to all of you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, have you ever heard the, the saying, think before you speak? Well, if you have, then give me an amen in those comments today. But if you're unfamiliar with the saying, well, the point of it is that you know, if you speak before you think about what it is you're going to say, if you don't think about the words that you want to use or how those words might sound to another person or how they might feel about what you're saying, well, then you're likely to get yourself into a bit of trouble, whether it's your relationships at work, at home, in, in a public place, because... When you don't think before you speak, well, you're more likely to blurt out um, some badly informed statements and risk losing some credibility. I mean, let alone hurt someone by putting your, your foot in your mouth, even, even if your intentions are genuine in intention. Because once those words exit your mouth, there are no number of apologies that are going to make them magically go back in. No, once they are out, 
Mm-hmm. Once you've blurted it out, and you can't just retract it. It's a lot like trying to close the gate after the horse has already bolted from the pen. It's often just too late. And that's why it's important to, to think before you speak, which is a lesson that Peter would have done well to have learned, I think, before he spoke up in this gospel reading. Now, our gospel reading today, it's actually the continuation of the, the story that we heard last week. When we heard um, Jesus ask the disciples a question, who do you say that I am? And last week we heard that, that Peter answered quickly saying, well, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And it's an answer that Jesus praises Peter for. I'm saying that he will become the rock upon which Jesus will build the church. But my, oh my, how quickly the tide can turn. Because today, just two verses later, we hear Peter speak up and put his foot in his mouth. And when Jesus explains that Peter is right, that he is the Messiah, and that to be the Messiah means that Jesus would have to undergo suffering. That he would be arrested, beaten, crucified, killed, and then be raised. Well, Peter, no, Peter is quick to grab a hold of Jesus to pull him aside and say, nope, no, no, that that can't happen to you. And that's not what we were asking for. It's not what we signed up for. I mean, Jesus, when I said you were the Messiah, I was thinking of a Messiah a bit more like a, a king, right? Someone who would reestablish the throne of David, someone who would come and and help our nation to once again be under its own authority. You know, an independent, a a sovereign nation with power, with influence, with security. And that's what Peter wanted. That's what he thought Jesus would bring. But Jesus' announcement of the death-dealing events that are going to unfold when they get to Jerusalem, it doesn't point to anything resembling the glory of power, security, and influence. So I can understand why Peter protests. Right? God forbid it, don't let this happen. But we hear quickly of what Jesus thinks of Peter, of Peter's answer. And what Jesus thinks of Peter's understanding of the function and the role of of the Messiah. Get behind me, Satan. Some pretty harsh words, Jesus. But Jesus isn't trying to insult Peter. He's trying to correct Peter's thoughts. You know, as with the the wilderness where, where Satan tempted Jesus to try to turn away from this path that was laid before him, Peter Himself is placing himself as an obstacle, standing in front of Jesus, trying to impede Jesus from following this path. Like Satan. Peter's trying to get Jesus to simply turn away, but we know Jesus refuses. Jesus refuses to turn away from the path that has been laid before him that leads to Jerusalem. All the Gospels, they all say that it was necessary for Jesus to go to Jerusalem. And why? Because he will be raised on that third day. And God will put to death the lie of violence as ultimate power. So Jesus, this morning, he simply wants Peter to to get behind him, to not just believe and say that he's the Messiah, but to have faith enough in Jesus as the Messiah that he would willing, willingly support him. Right? But Jesus doesn't tell you know, Peter. He doesn't dissolve their relationship. He doesn't break. He doesn't say, get out of here, take a hike, go away. Like Jesus does with Satan in the wilderness. No, Jesus simply reminds Peter where he belongs. And as a follower, as a disciple, he belongs behind Jesus, following Jesus. But I know, oh, 
how often we, like Peter, love to, to turn that around. To have Jesus get behind us. To follow where we lead. Right? To support whatever it is that we want. And whatever we do, whatever we say, so that we can say that Jesus is behind us 100%. And then justify whatever it is that we do or say. And if we don't have to follow Jesus, I mean, if Jesus is just following us wherever we go, then, well, then we get to determine what it is that we do. Determine that with the hope, right, that hopefully it won't cost us anything significant. But that's not the way, Jesus says. And if we think that that is the way, then Jesus is going to respond to you and me just as he did to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because that's where, where we belong. We belong behind Jesus, following Jesus' lead wherever he leads us and whatever it might cost us. And I know that will be difficult to trust, difficult for us to trust fully and thoroughly. And because to trust and to follow Jesus wherever Jesus leads us means a substantial risk of vulnerability for you and me. But that's why Jesus uses the cross as a symbol for discipleship. The cross that before it became a symbol of of salvation was a sign of condemnation. The cross was a sign of, of what happens to you when those with power are afraid. It was a sign of, of what happens when you choose to, to live, out, live out a different expression of power in the world. The cross meant the willingness to stand up against the power that silences and oppresses the cross meant that you had tried to renounce the systems and institutions and leaders who choose themselves over others, who evade the, the common good for the community for the sake of their own power. Jesus tells the disciples, tells you and me that to commit to following him well, that means ex fully accepting the risks that we might place ourselves in when we choose to be like him. Now, Jesus was willing right, to be God's revolutionary Messiah, knowing the violence that could be done to his body as a consequence of his pursuing God's justice, God's grace, God's love, and God's peace instead of the privileges of the empire. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus invites. And this is the life right, that, that Jesus calls you and me to. And not just as individuals, but truly as a community. This is a call of collective commitment, a collective commitment that's made under the promise that the one who goes will always be with us as Jesus promises at the very end of this gospel until the end of the age. So, as Paul says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Show hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them, do not curse them. Feed your enemies and quench the thirst of all, and do these things, Paul says, with a grateful heart. Because you see, this cross work. It will always point us out. It will always lead us to look for someone. It will always call us to gather, to bring people into community. The work of the cross of Christ, you see, is a life-giving one. That's what God reveals to us in and through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Work that God has undertaken on behalf of you and me, the world, and all who are in it. A work that will always come with challenge, yet. is the very work, the one work, that is able to redeem and reconcile you and me in this world. And this is the clearly thought out 
word that God speaks to you and to me today and every day in and through Christ. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join in our hymn of the day, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on your divine vision of justice and equity. Empower our trust in you that we would willingly lose our lives for the sake of Christ as we love and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do, as your beloved creation, so that we would be inspired to live in ways that help to sustain all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even though we, those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. We pray for Jacob Black and the people of Kenosha, Wisconsin, as they struggle for justice. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing. And heal the sick, especially Noreen, Jim, Teresa, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite you to prepare your table at home as we gather to celebrate the meal of Holy Communion. We'll continue with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Whose honor in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in your name. Whose In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying that this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to celebrate this meal at home, God's holy meal for God's holy people. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, grant us
God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The crea- God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in God's eternal love. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join in our dismissal hymn today, Send Me, Lord. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.